Hey everyone again, I have a bone to pick with you. So apparently 98% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribers. And I was hoping to have a thousand subscribers before I posted this video and this upgrade, but we didn't get there. So hopefully this will push me over the 1000 subscribers. Make sure that you subscribe. I have uh, multiple things in the works that I'm gonna be reviewing different hardware, different test settings for Chia and other cryptos. So smash that subscribe button. Today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be upgrading Goose server with 120 terabytes of storage. So it's a small rack mount server that has no right really hosting 128, 120 terabytes of storage, but we're gonna cram it in there and I'm gonna show you how I got it done. So this one might be a little bit longer of a video as I'm gonna be taking you through from start to finish. So grab your popcorn, sit down on the couch and watch the whole thing. Also subscribe. All right, so here we are. Uh, we are running out of space way too fast. And in order to fill up the remaining drive bays, I bought a SATA expansion card, which needs to go in here. That also means that I need to remove these two cards and install them into Viper. So I purchased a PCI expansion for Viper, and then we're gonna put these two cards inside of Viper and then we're going to have our SATA expansion cards going to the row of hard drives here. Unfortunately, all right, so before I toss in the new cards, I wanted to make sure that this was able to read all four cards on one PCI lane. So I plugged all four of the current cards in there, and I'm going to see if it boots up, and if it can recognize all four of those cards, then we're good to go. We get to save a lot of lanes and I can put in my other two GPUs into this rack. So a quick overview of the different type of blower styles with graphics cards, and you should definitely take note of this when you're buying one. So the majority of graphics cards nowadays have the heat sinks and the vents popping up throughout the top. So here's the front of the card, and all the air gets blown out the top, back into the case actually, and then it gets cooled off or it gets blown out of the case. I don't necessarily like that thermal dynamic. I would rather it getting shot out the back of the case, uh, but for some reason nowadays they build them uh, with it exhausting out the into the case. These Zotax have it the old way where you can see the fins. Those fins are going right through the card and then out the front. So the air is blowing through the card and out, uh, so out the back. So this is actually exhausting. You can see the fins there. This is exhausting out the back of the case. So in order for me to put these in the front of my server, I had to flip the front fan so that the fan is blowing this way and not into uh, the oncoming <clears throat> pushing hot air. It would basically just be pushing back into the card. So we flipped around the fan in the front and now these two cards will be able to blow air out the front of the case and these ones will continue to blow out the back. All right, so since we were able to use this PCI USB expansion, we were able to put one of the cards from Goose into here, which allows us to free up a PCIe slot. We need that PCIe slot because we have to do a SATA expansion in order to get all the new hard drives in there. So we've got a whole bunch of new stuff upstairs that I'm going to show you. Uh, as soon as I'm done updating Goose, then we're going to take it out of the rack and we're going to get rid of these. So right now I've got five drives that are just connected through USB and the transfer rates are just so slow. They're so slow that I can barely even get plots to them. Uh, they back up and it's just, it's not good enough. So those are going into Goose, and we have the drive cages already right here that we're going to be putting in some of them, and I also have another one that's in inside of uh, Goose. So we'll take a look at that as soon as we get Goose updated and shut down. Alright, 
so we have everything pulled out that we're gonna be using to install all of this into Goose. We've already installed a few things like the that's the 2.5 gigabit, uh, the hard drive, we've got a few extra things here like the SATA expansion card here that we're gonna be installing plus the two SATA power cables that we need to power on all of these new drives and we're going to be shucking these five drives and we're going to be shoving them all into here so we're going to have to make room there's an additional spot up here for one and then we're going to make another one of these over here with four and because we took out the one of the graphics cards that was sitting in here and it was covering up all of the PCIe we're able to utilize that SATA expansion now so now that we have the ability to use one of these SATA expansion cards, we can toss that right in there and then have an additional six cards available on my SATA. This motherboard currently has eight, card, uh, eight SATA ports and they're all obviously being taken up right now. So wish me luck. All right, now that we have them shucked, we're going to need to uh, cover up the third pin here with electrical tape because these are white label and you have to do that in order for the power to be properly distributed through these. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, perfect. So we've got all of them shucked, these five, and we've got the pin covered on all of them. So now what we have to do is we have to start making room in here for the second drive bay, the second drive cage here. We're gonna install like that. And we're not gonna be able to use these connectors because the, they're gonna breach through the G-Force. So if I measure it correctly, there should be enough room. Mm, very close. So we'll see if we have enough room there to keep that graphics card in there. I really hope we do. So first thing we need to do is we're gonna take out this cage. Ow. This cage, take this out. We're gonna to have to figure out how to remove this piece here. Uh, I think I'm just gonna take all the drives out and then see what I have because this piece uh, it seems to be too small to be fitting in uh, our drive cage here. I don't know that this can fit inside there, but we'll see. So for now, let's just uh, take this out. This was actually a bracket I made for one of the 3070s that was in here. I had a 3070 here and a 3070 here and then two 3070s in there. So this used to hold four 3070s, all custom mounted. And now it's gonna hold 12 hard drives and 
and one 3070 with 2.5 gigabit. Now, this will go in here, like so. Perfect. These are gonna be really tight, so we're gonna have to install this after. Uh, but we're also gonna need to put a, uh, a mount here. So let me go take a look to see if I can find a mount. So I have a mount over on this side that allows it to be braced up. In fact, I'm going to just take this. All right, so this bracket actually, I just took off the, the uh, two screws. And this bracket actually fits perfectly. If you take a look at that, it's perfectly flush. And here I can do some cable management underneath that bracket. So basically I will uh, double side tape that bracket and then we're going to install this on top of it in here and whew, we're getting close this bracket is actually going to be really good for cable management so I'm going to be routing all of these cables here through one of these things I'm also going to be routing all the SATA cables through here underneath and into there so it's actually going to help out a lot with cable management Holy Moses. All right, so it's pretty tight, but we got the first two cages in. All the power is connected. And the SATA connections are connected. They're going through this uh, channel here, which is great. I'm gonna hook up eight here, but I have to hook, remember that my uh, OS drive has to go on one of these uh, six gigabit per second. These are gonna go over to the side. And now we have to start installing this drive. So I think what I'll do first is probably uh, reattach these cables, solidify this down to the ground, and then, uh, and then I'll start plugging them in. All right, let's take these. Plastic things off. One. So, we've got all five drives installed here. One, two, three, four, and then the operating system is on a sled down here that's double-sided taped. Here's the fan for the front chassis here. And now we just have to set it in there, fasten it in, power it up. Holy Dinah, we're nearing the end stretch here. Okie dokie. Sometimes you get so consumed whether or not you can, you wonder whether you should. So what are the chances that this all boots up and they're all visible by windows? This is visible. Uh, I got my 2.5 gigabit network on there. I've got my one 3070. I've got 12 drives, actually 13 drives because I've got my SSD here. And eight are connected to the motherboard. Uh, one, two, three, four, five are connected to this SATA extension. So, boys, we got tons of space. We even have room for one more, one more uh, card here. 
What am I doing? What are the chances that this turns on and it actually recognizes all of it? I'm gonna go ahead and say zero. <clears throat> and even if one drive is not showing up, I'm gonna have no idea which one it is. So, wish me luck. All right. This was a painstaking task, but they're all showing up. All 13 drives, that's 12 10 terabytes, and one operating system, actually 14 drives, because there's an NVMe there. So, we've got should be 12 of these drives. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 1 terabytes, 1 uh, NVMe, and then an SSD. So, <clears throat> I ended up having to update the drivers for that SATA card. And it's, I mean, this is as packed as you can get it. There is no space for anything else. Um, we have maximized this. There's the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, 13070, the SATA expansion card, an NVMe PCIe slot, 12 10 terabyte hard drives, and an SSD, all in one small case. Okay, now to put it back into the rack. This is gonna be heavy. Look at what small of a case that is. There she is.